sex workers of Reddit, what was the saddest request you have ever received? This was a long time ago, but for a hour of his 90 minute session he just sat there and talked about his ex-wife who hated him. He also asked me if he should stop financially supporting his stepson because he wouldn't stop smoking weed in his house. Then read me some poetry he wrote about his ex-wife. I never saw him again, but he emailed me more of his poetry afterwards. Back when I worked in a dungeon, while there was no penetrative sex or anything that would be classified as sex, no exchange of fluids etc. Still classified as sex work though. One client came in, he was married, all he wanted was for me to put on a wig, wear a certain shade of love out in lipstick and dye perfume, and then have me compliment him while he told me about his day. He was a client up until his divorce and remarriage. In my younger days, I worked at a mail review. I had this woman of about 40 something who would come in fairly regularly. She asked me to a dinner date, I obliged her request, as she was quite attractive. About 5 minutes in, she started bawling, and when I asked what's the matter, she told me I was an exact replica of her son whom she lost to cancer. She proceeded to show me pictures, and tbh the resemblance was uncanny. We chatted over the years since, but in 2018 she passed of cancer. Not me, but a story told to me from a girl I know who used to be a sex worker. She had a regular client who'd come in every week and just wanted to talk, be held or innocent things like that. Never wanted anything sexual. According to her this wasn't that unusual, as some guys felt guilty about going to a brothel or just wanted fetishes satisfied. But she said this dude was different. From what she pieced together he had an extremely unhappy home life. It seemed the only happiness he had in life was the hour he spent with this girl. She said one time he booked an appointment, but never showed up, and they never heard from him again fine. I used to cam as a denial dom, and I worked with a guy who was into really into being humiliated, and didn't seem to believe me for quite some time, when I told him I was into dominance I roll, off the camera too. I'm not usually into the humiliation aspect, but played along with him as he wasn't asking for anything too extreme, and it was hands down the hottest session I've ever had. I always insisted on aftercare after a session, because I feel it's negligent not to offer it, and he opened up to me for a half hour about how much pressure is on him constantly, and how much of a relief he finds this particular king to be. He was from a strict midwestern family with very strict notions of masculinity and there was so much catharsis flowing out of him in that moment, like getting off with someone who was willing to let him be weak had torn down a huge dam of some kind, and it was all just running out. I'd heard a lot of similar stuff from clients, especially guys who were new at it, which I got a lot of, I am, a non-threatening dom lol, but he was on a whole other level of wildly self-aware and intelligent and emotionally in tune, and it felt so tragic that someone that insightful and intuitive and sensitive should have spent a lifetime feeling the need to tamp it down. He had a really healthy view of his kink, and the baggage associated with it, and I wished him the best and still do, and I hoped he's in a better place, and can express himself, and his feelings of weakness and vulnerability publicly now to 6. Not my story, but someone else's that somehow stuck with me. Owner of an escort service who shared a story of a guy who apparently was from a wealthy family, but as a child hardly ever saw his parents. He was raised by a nanny with beautiful long hair which he always combed for her as a kid. Into puberty he had got aroused from combing it, she noticed and gave him his first sexual experience. Since then the man always requested girls with long hair and only wanted to comb it and then get a hand job. Kinda sad thinking about all the parental love he missed and trying to compensate like this. I have known a lot of sex workers and variations on this often came up when chatting, mentioned a few times already about people just wanting to be held happens a lot, it's not viewed as sad at all. There are dozens of stories I heard that were sad in different ways, but the two that stand out are about a fairly young Australian guy who got his new friend for the evening back to his room, and when she was checking him in the shower she seen his junk was a disaster zone, she said it was all a swollen lump, he did not want sex. He wanted her to push pencils down his penis. 
she refused to even touch him, and he started crying. The other story I remember is about a middle-aged European guy who, when he got someone back to his room, would make phone calls during sex. He would call his wife and kids and talk while in the act. He would call at weird times and say he could not sleep and he wanted to hear their voices. He could not do anything until he made a call and started acting the good husband and father. BTWI was told this story by more than one person. He did it a lot eh? I was the client with the sad request. I'm gay. Just to set the stage. Though I'm much more comfortable in my skin and with my sexuality now, just check my username. Years ago I was a self-esteem mess. I was young, gay, hairy, fat, and felt as though no other gay man on earth would want me. I tried to get dates, only to have guy after guy ghost me when he realized I didn't look like an underwear model. Then, I met Troy online. He was an escort and very open about it. He was beautiful, kind, and instantly I wanted him. I hadn't had sex with another man in almost 3 years, so I was pretty desperate for some action. I negotiated the fee with Troy, booked him for the night, about 4 hours, and sent him my address. When he arrived, he was even more beautiful than his pictures. I wanted to duck him right then and there. But, something happened when he took his clothes off. He was standing in my bedroom, naked and ready to party so to speak, and something in me snapped. I realized that the only way I had to get a hot guy like that to have sex with me was to pay him. I sat down on my bed and started to cry. The body image issues, I was now even more self-conscious to get naked in front of Troy, beings that he was practically Adonis in my eyes, the lack of a love life, the self-esteem, the depression, it all coalesced into a miasma of torment and pain. Troy, to his credit, didn't question my sudden change. Instead. He gently undressed me and then laid beside me in bed, his head on my chest and his leg resting on top of mine. For almost an hour, he told me about his life, asked about mine, and even sounded genuinely excited to hear about my master's thesis topic. Whether he meant it or was just a good actor, I'll never know. When his time was up, the time I pre-booked, he didn't leave. Instead, he asked if he could spend the night. We stayed cuddled up like that and talked until dawn. Before he finally did leave, he did give me a hand job. But, it didn't feel as though I paid for that, even though I did. This felt more like it was a friend making me feel good, not someone who was obligated. Troy, wherever you are, thank you for being so sweet. I've got a friend in his early 40s who's a pretty booksmart, good looking dude. But, he's pretty emotionally immature and absolutely cannot connect with women. I've seen him try, and it's actually quite sad. He more or less reverts to being an agitated 14 year old. A few months back he told me he was looking for a cam general just to talk to, since he was tired of not being able to talk to anyone, and that he found a few who seemed really excited to talk to him. He really is a nice guy, I didn't have the heart to tell him that for these girls it's just a job for them, and there really won't be an emotional connection. I'm not sure if he ever went through with it. I'm a guy who shoots porn, so technically a sex worker. I've got some requests of PH users who send me some messages. One guy just wanted me to shoot a girl who would say hi, John, I love you John, I miss you John and so on. I guess this guy has nobody who talks to him. I once had someone who gave me $250 a week to just talk and smoke weed with him. No sex at all. He was very lonely because his wife passed and just wanted female company. One day he broke down during one of our hangouts saying how much he wished his wife was here. I just let him cry while I held him. This is a different kind of interaction of similar tone. And I had a phone sex client. It became clear after a few calls that I think his only interactions were online and involved giving money for attention back. I don't know if he had the means to keep this up or not. But he got very weird around the fifth call. Upset I wasn't online as much to talk. Wanted to talk all throughout the day and when he couldn't afford it would try to haggle me lower in price. I told him that this amount isn't healthy for the mind and he should seek therapy. 
I was diagnosed with PTSD and had wonderful therapy that changed my life around. He got upset at me and blocked me. Two days later. I wake up to text messages asking me to take him back. He sent photos of the front and back of all of his credit cards to prove he was serious. I felt so bad for him 